Hi, Sue Seven, just tell us your name and where you're from. My name is Mark Freeman. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm a member of SEIU Healthcare Minnesota Local 113. Okay, and uh, tell us your story. 20 years ago, I entered into the home, the American dream of home ownership. I purchased a house in North Minneapolis on a fixed rate loan at 9.5% interest. My beginning payments were roughly about $450 per month. That included taxes, insurance, and all the wonderful things that go along with home ownership. Over 20 years, I can't deny, we missed a couple payments here and there, did our best to catch up as quickly as we could, but we fell into foreclosure last year in October. My payment had ballooned without my knowledge, not from $400 a month to $1,400 per month on a fixed rate loan. We entered into foreclosure with Bank of America. Through the foreclosure process, we found out that our bank, that our mortgage had been sold 12 to 15 different times to different lenders. We don't know how our payment escalated to where it did, because Bank of America would only release the last 10 years of loan history. We demanded the first 10 years and we cannot get any, any satisfaction. We did get a refi and a renegotiation and rework out of our, of our mortgage. So now, instead of having only 10 years left, I am beginning a new 30-year mortgage, so I will pay for my house by the time I'm 85 years old. So foreclosure is probably still in my future. This is just wrong, and it must change. It must change now. If you could speak with the executives at, at Bank of America, what would be the one thing you'd want to say to them? Make the foreclosure process. I understand the need for foreclosure but make the foreclosure process a little more friendly towards the, lend the lendee, the purchaser of the property. None of us want to lose our house, but to be given deadlines and hoops to jump through, such as getting major paperwork that had to be filled out on a Friday, sent back to Dallas, Texas on a Monday, having to get hold of documents and notaries and, and everything on a weekend is impossible. It has to be more worked out to the consumer's benefit, not to the bank's benefit. Okay, and the last question, why'd you come out here today? It's time someone takes a stand, and I've always been willing to take a stand when brothers and sisters, people of America are in need, because this democracy is for all of us. It's not for the corporations, and if the corporations are individuals, such as the Supreme Court says, then they should be treated as individuals. If they break the law, the corporation should be shut down and sent to jail. The leaders of the corporation should go to jail for breaking laws. This is our democracy, we the people, and we're here to make a stand. Okay, well thank you very much for talking with us. All right, so how do you think the event went today? I think we made history, and I think by getting in front of the banks and in front of the corporations, we have actually brought this to America. CNN, and with all the major news sources out, they have seen us shut down streets that are filled with lobbyists who control our democracy. This is our America. It's we the people, not we the corporations. And people need to start reading their constitution and their declaration of independence. This country was founded to believe in people's rights, not the rights of corporations. And now, uh, what can viewers watching at home do to take part in this? You need to call your senators and your elected officials. Your right to vote does not end at the ballot box. You must watch them. You must demand that they work for you as a citizen of this nation. It is up to us to protect our democracy, not the democracy of the corporations. It's we the people, not we the corporations. All right, thank you once again. Thank you.